Let us pray. Lord God, you have made us your children. We are your sons and your daughters. We are those who you have sent out into the world to, to live as your light, to live as that which preserves that which is around us. And so, Lord God, help us to remember who we are. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, once upon a time, but a time not so very long ago, in fact, a time very near, and in a place not so very far from the place that you would know, there was a man named Jonathan, Jonathan Salt. And he and his wife, Tina, celebrated the birth of a pair of twins, one boy, one girl. And these two children, one named Thomas, one named Jessica, they grew up in this household. And in many ways, the household was not that different from many households. Both mom and dad went to work. But when they came home, they tried to teach their children who they are. And they would make you know, the typical bad jokes about being assaulted by love or, you know, as, as dad would leave each day, he would remind his children to be salty. And it kind of became that running joke in the family of, well, of course, this is the way we are going to be because going to be salty. And I'm not going to tell you that everything was perfect and idyllic and that they never had problems. In fact, the problems were what made the opportunities to teach the way that they were going to be. And so there came a time when Thomas had broken one of Jessica's favorite toys. It wasn't a malicious act. It was just he was playing a little rough with it. And Jessica, in anger, shouted out, I hate you. And the father came and he sat with both of the children and he said, you know, I I understand I understand your anger, I understand your hatred, I understand the frustration that you feel right here at this moment. And things can mean a lot to us. But things never mean as much as people. Things never mean as much as this relationship that you share will mean to you as your life goes on. And so I want us to work through what is it going to take to make things right? What would it look like to make things right? And as they talked, Thomas eventually said, you know, Dad, I think what I need to do is I need to find a way to replace this for my sister who I do care about. Are there things I can do that would would allow me to make the money it takes to, to buy another toy for her? Jessica 
Jessica on the other side, seeing that her brother was making this effort, you know, could no longer hold on to that, that anger and that hatred anymore. And even though he did eventually buy her a replacement for that which had been broken, it never meant the same. Because what meant even more was the effort her brother had put into making it right. You know, and eventually, you know, they would find themselves in, in school and they would come home and they would say, Mom, other people, they don't act like us. They don't live like us. They don't do the things that we do. mom would nod and listen and say I, I, I understand that that's we do do a lot of things that are going to seem very strange and I know this is going to be hard as you try to go through life but this is, this is who we are this is what we do these are the ways in which we live and you're seeing the way other people sometimes treat one another you're seeing, beginning to see that other people don't always speak truthfully but as a salt we always tell the truth we don't shade it we don't try to make it um, you know we aren't ugly about it we don't try to hurt other people but we try to leave no doubt that your word as a salt it's true. It's accurate. That word is our bond. You don't need any oaths. You don't need any promises. You don't need anything to, to try to make things different. But I also want you to understand that lies are like water on rocks. And it may not seem like any big deal. But that water, when it seeps into the pores of the rock and it freezes, it can break the toughest iron. When a rock is thrown into a, a stream of running water, it will continue to eat away at it. And so, no matter if others tell the truth or not, you always... Speak the truth. A little bit later, as they continued to grow, their father wanted to make sure that they understood what it meant to be in relationships with other people. You know, as boys and girls grow up, they begin to be interested in, well, finding someone else to share their life with. And... So he told them, always know that that other person is not there to please you. They have full value on their own. They are worthy of your respect, whether they like you, whether they dislike you, whether you think they're beautiful, whether you think they're ugly, they are worthy of your respect. And the same applies to you. And as they began to enter the, the world of dating, they found that not everybody thought that way. That they found that there were people who, who looked at them and, and again, as their friends began to grow up, they, the way in which they sometimes would, would view, whether it was other women or other young men, you know, it was like, oh, well, here's a, here's a fresh piece of meat. And, and again, that, that discomfort of saying, but that's not how I view things. That's not how the way in which I've been taught to encounter the world. This person, no matter what they have done, they're worthy of my respect. They're worthy of my love. They're not just a person to, to be someone who I want or desire. They're to be someone who God treasures. And that got a number of laughs from their, from their fellow classmates.
But that wasn't the hardest things they had to learn. You know, life was, was challenging because they were taught to love their enemies. Doesn't mean that they were going to love them back, but to, to try to see the good in them, to try to learn their story, to try and understand why they, why they didn't necessarily like each other, why they view, viewed the world the way that they did and why they acted the way that they did, and to try to see them instead of as enemies, as someone to, instead of judging, to learn about. They were taught to turn the other cheek, that theirs, you know, when inevitably it came, that they were pushed down on the playground or pushed against the lockers. The natural reaction may have been to strike back. They weren't to respond to violence with violence. You know, so many times they would see their, their classmates, you know, get into fights over different things and, and that continual lesson, things are just things. You know, if something is so important to somebody else that they feel like they need it, and they need it more than you do, then don't hold on to it. Give them your coat. Give them your shoes. You know, it's not worth it. They would see when they were growing up, they had uh, people who would frequently stop by their house. And apparently the salt house was known for a place where a person could always come to get a, a warm meal. The mom or the dad would always make sure that whoever came left with enough for the night. And as they were growing up, they would ask, well, why are we doing this? Why isn't everybody else doing this? Said, well, it's the right thing to do. When we can help, we help. We're not here to judge. We're not here to say, determine the worthiness of the person who we, whether we share our bread or we share what we have with. If God places you in a position where you can help, you'll find joy in learning how to let go and learning how to say, God, go with God. You know, there were times where there was a lot of food on the table and there were a lot of gifts around uh, birthdays and Christmas. And there were times where it was tough. There was a time where Jonathan lost his job. And so they only had Tina's income to live on for, for several months. And there was, there was enough to eat. There was enough to pay the bills, but there wasn't anything more. And so they went through that Christmas and it was what gifts they had were things that they could make. And eventually, Jonathan found another job and a job that was life-giving and meaningful for him. But it doesn't mean that there weren't times where he questioned that in that time where he was, you know, feeling like, well, but I should be doing more for my family. And yet, to his wife and to his children, he was doing all he could. As their children were getting to the age where they were starting to think about what they want to do with their lives, the advice he would give them is never let money be the deciding factor for your life. Life is more than your bank balance. It's more than the things that you have. It's more than the house you live in. Build a life who fits, that fits who God created you to be. 
put your heart into the right things and you will shine. You will shine like others can't even imagine. Just learn how to trust that God will provide for you. God provides for the birds of the air. God provides for the flowers of the ground. God provides for things that are far less valuable to God than you are. Do the right thing. Live the right way. Be salty. And God will provide enough. Most of the world will not live like you do. You are salt. You are a salt. You are important. You're not there to judge other people for how they live or how they don't live. You're to be a beacon of what can be. An example of what should be. You bear the name salt, and it may seem like a common thing, but salt was so important in the ancient world that it's where we get our word salary from. It is that which provides that which people need to live on. And so go, be salty. Don't be foolish, be salty. Now these children, as they grew, they learned how hard this was to live. And yet they could also see the gift of this family that they were a part of, the gift of the way in which their father and their mother lived, and they tried to find a way, a path, to live this way so that when they would have their own children, they too might be salts worthy of their name. What I did is I basically have taken a lot of the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount and woven them into this family story. Because I believe that's what Jesus believes it is to be salt to be a light to the nations to be a light that's set up on a hill instead of put, hid under a bushel basket i believe this is what jesus envisions when he talks about these ways of living out god's way god's law in the midst of a world that doesn't always live that way and yet it's always a, a gracious understanding of it it's not one of these things to where yes you are salt and everybody else is trash. Other people may have other values. Other people may have other ways in which they do things. Other people may have other things. But judge not, lest you be judged. But also, don't change who you are for everybody else. You see, although we may not bear the name salt for our family name. As followers of Christ, we are all a part of that family. We are all people who Jesus has placed in the midst of the world to preserve that world. Salt in the ancient world is for preserving. It's not for seasoning. It is for preserving. And when it stops being able to do that, when it becomes foolish like the world around us, and Again, the word there in, in Greek is, is not uh, when salt stops being salty. It's when start, salt starts being foolish. When it stops being the way it was meant to be, the way it was called and created to be, then it loses its meaning. It loses its value. It loses its, that which makes it distinct from everything else around it. It loses its ability to preserve everything else around it. And so, be salty. Go and live as 
children who are loved, who are valued, who are people who have been, um, who, have, who are still continuing to try and learn a way of being in a world that doesn't always understand it. And you know, the father in the story tried to do the best he could to live this out and to pass it on to his children. And I, I'm absolutely concerned, convinced that he probably didn't get it perfect. He probably didn't get it all right. And yet I believe he was probably value, uh, worthy of the name that he bore. And even though we all have our own stories, we all have our times where we maybe haven't got it all right. It's one of the reasons we come together for confession and forgiveness so that we may learn how to set those things aside. And we rise up again as a baptized child of God and say, but this day, I'm going to be salty. This day, I'm going to be a light. This day, I'm going to live how my father has told me to live. Amen.